All right, before we jump into another uh, draft for Amonkhet Remastered, uh, I want to remind everyone that my content is sponsored by Card Kingdom. Uh, you can use my referral link by clicking on it in the description below or by clicking on the Card Kingdom logo below here on Twitch, uh, and it will take you to their store using my referral link, so check them out. See if we can do a little better than uh, last time. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we talked about this in the last draft. Hollow One is like, you know, really good in constructed formats where you can quickly cycle and discard your hand and play it for free. Um, it's less impressive and limited, but it's still a pretty nice card. I mean, even just a five mana four four with cycling two would certainly be playable, and it's obviously better than that. However, this format being what it is um, basically means I think we should take Gustwalker or Magma Spray. Magma Spray kills a lot of really problematic creatures like Gustwalker and most of the other, like the dozens of really good two drops in this format. Um, and it does it pretty efficiently. So I think we go with Magma Spray in the end here. Do we just back that up with another Magma Spray? So if you could go close to Mono White, Oketra's Monument is a pretty sweet source of creature tokens. Um, and Spellweaver Eternal is not bad, but I think we just grab another Magma Spray. Yeah. Okay, well, Obelisk Spider is a sweet payoff for the Black-Green uh, minus one, minus one counter deck, which is probably my favorite deck in this format just because of how unique it is. Um... But, you know, we're not exactly doing what that deck wants us to do at this point. Um, I'm probably just going to take the Pain Caster. It's fine. It's not amazing, but neither... I mean, this is the only card in this pack that I think is, like, exceptional. The rest of this pack is pretty medium. You know, Black Cartouche is fine, but I'll take the Pain Caster. All right, well, we're going to take an open fire here. Kills lots of things in this format. It's great common. Was the best common in this format, um when it was regular old triple Amonkhet. Or, I don't remember if it was an Amonkhet or Hour, but either way, it was it was one of the best cards. Uh, and it's commons, anyway. And it's what I'm going to take here. Okay, well, I kind of feel like I'm being pushed in the same direction. Uh, you know, we were a red-green deck in our last draft, and seeing Aronis' stalwart here is pretty hard to pass. Oasis Ritualist... You know, this is an interesting pair of cards to look at just because it's like, how will this format be exactly? Because Ritualist is pretty great in a deck, in a format that's pretty um, uh, slow um, because of the ramp and the fixing. And Runners of Stalwart is great in a format that's fast because it's a really aggressive two drop. I think we're going to go with the Stalwart. From what I've seen so far, this format's just as aggressive as its predecessor, which was pretty darn aggressive. So. Uh, Magmaroth is mostly for the spells deck. Um, here I think we're looking at either a Thresher Lizard or a Hooded Brawler. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to grab the Brawler. Okay, so we've got a Dissenter's Deliverance, which isn't, you know, the fact that it cycles is nice. And there are some real artifacts in this set, too. Probably just take a Moloch, though. All right, so I think we probably just snag a desert here. There's enough desert payoffs, and lands with cycling are great because if you're flooding out and you draw one, unlike most lands, you can just throw it away. So, but yeah, we're going to take the desert here over the Ceridon. And if we do end up red-green, the best desert payoffs mostly are in this color pair. Um, the ones at common and uncommon and even at rare are in this color pair. This was sort of the least defined archetype in the original format. Um, it's kind of like an aggro deck, but it can also do some some other stuff. Uh, so yeah. All right. So none of this stuff is very interesting. I'm kind of leaning towards just like another desert, even though it's off color. I mean, Wander and Death is okay if we end up in that deck. 
and you know, these cards are all okay. Um, but I feel like generally you take a Cycling Desert over okay cards in this format, even if it is off color. I didn't have anything on color in that pack anyway, so we'll just have to see where things take us here. So here's a desert payoff, not a great one. I think I'm just going to take another desert. Stock up on deserts and hopefully get some sand stranglers. That's my plan. Take the Ceridon, you know. Cycle it early and play it as a really mediocre creature late. But when you have both of those options, it makes the card a lot better. grab another desert on the off chance we pick up like a crazy desert build around i'm just gonna do it i mean i'm not gonna play life goes on so and sun scorched desert isn't like terrible if we end up in a really aggressive deck anyway especially if we have um other desert payoffs so far this draft looks kind of like our last one except we don't have a ridiculous mythic rare as our first pick but of course, we never drew our ridiculous mythic rare, so, you know, there you go. Okay, all right, so, okay. So I think we probably take Curator here. You know, we're not locked in on a second color by any means, and Curator's pretty good. Um, you know, a four mana, four, four with flying, that is also a decent cycling payoff because it lets you scry. Like, we're passing another Magma Spray and potentially something like Merciless Javelinier. It's not bad. Um, but I do think the Curator is just better. Like, just a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flying is probably just better than Merciless Javelinier. So, you add the upside to the mix, and it's definitely better. So, we'll take the Curator here. Okay, so we're definitely... Like, blue is definitely something we should be looking at now. Um, I do like Crocodile of the Crossing, but Burning Fist Minotaur is quite good. Um... Burning Fist Minotaur, yeah, is a nice two-drop. It also lets you discard cards, which matters right now just for our Curator. Kenra is nice. Um, I think overall I like the Minotaur the most here. It's also the most likely to make the cut at this point because our second color is to be determined. There's Imminent Doom, which is cool, but not very good and limited. Um... So, Horror of the Broken Lands is pretty nice. Um, as far as, you know, it's another cycling payoff, cycling slash discard payoff, and it has one mana cycling itself. We could also just take the Firebrand Archer as a nice aggressive two drop, which I don't think. I think that's probably what I do, just because red seems most likely at this point. But Horror of the Broken Lands is a nice little card. Okay, we're seeing some more of these guys. Um, and they're pretty nice. They're better in black green, where you can really take over things, but. Uh, you know, really get value out of those counters. Um, but yeah, we are going to take open fire here, though, because yeah, it's just better. Fanbearer, another nice common, but we're taking open fire. I do love me some Grave Digger, but here I think we're going to take a Stalwart. Starting to look like our last deck for sure. <laughs> um, right now is probably what we're looking at, but. We're by no means locked into green. I think we're basically locked into red because of these several good removal spells we have in red. All right, so do we want a Hope Tender or a Scavenger more? Scavenger lets you rummage every time you exert a creature, which is nice. Um, Hope Tender can help us ramp. I think I'll go with the Hope Tender. <laughs> All right, well, we'll grab another stalwart here, that's for sure. We're going to be, you know, our last deck had five Firebrand Archers, so it looks like we're going to be a less Firebrand Archery deck than, than the first one. But 
Other than that. <laughs> Just keep grabbing the Ronus as stalwarts. It's usually not the wrong thing to do. So this one will be more about Ronus as stalwart than it will Archer. Okay, so we'd rather have Blur of Blades, which is a nice card for killing smaller creatures. Um, or Sidewinder Naga, who will be a 4-2 with Trample a reasonable amount of the time. I think I'd rather have the Blur... I mean, you're not desperate for late game in this format overall, I wouldn't say. Um, do I want one of these cyclers or a tormenting voice? This format is just so aggressive that you don't always need a late game. All right, we're going to take a trick here. We do have a lot of red, but I just don't think the payoff here is worth it. Rummaging and making them cost less, like, you know, matters, but not a ton. We're still, I'd say, we're probably locked in on green now with all of these stalwarts, but we'll see. And I guess we would like some things that cost more than three. Maybe we'll get Collected Company in the last pack. That'd be cool. Supernatural Stamina is a nice little trick. Okay. So, Torment of Hail, Fire. Not what we're looking for overall. It's not very good and limited. Um... It's fun, but not very good. This pack overall is super disappointing for us. Um, you know, mediocre two drop, mediocre three drop are basically our choices here. Uh, this pack is pretty disappointing for everybody, honestly. I think Oketra's Avenger and Aerial Guide are pretty great. I think we're just going to take a desert. Ooh, Trial of Zeal. That's a great removal spell. Makes us really want to find some cartouches, too, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's what we take here for sure. Oh, that's interesting. They made these... This is from, like, the Nico Bolas Planeswalker deck. And so it was never actually in the limited format. But Zealot of the God Pharaoh is now. That's cool. So I do love Chef at Monitor. If we were splashing, I think I'd be all over it. Um, but we're not. Uh, you know, it... it you cycle for four and you get a land and a card out of it. So you draw, it's a two for one in that sense. Um, so I think we want to decide here uh, if we want a cartouche. I think we probably want a cartouche. We did just take a trial after all, and it's a great one for aggressive decks anyway. So, yeah. So Struggle to Survive is pretty nice. Struggle is a nice removal spell. Uh, the Survive half's not that great, but, you know, I'll take it. Ooh, well, I was wanting desert pay payoffs, and oh, they put this in too. That's cool. So they put in all the Nico Bolas Planeswalker deck things. It seems um, Ramanop Ruins is a great payoff for deserts, and we already have several of them. And uh, yeah, I think that's what we want more than we want these two drops. We're pretty good on two drops. This does give us some late game because it lets us turn our extra deserts into uh, damage to the opponent's face. So another open fire is probably what we take here. Yeah, we actually don't have that many creatures in our deck is kind of the awkward thing we have going on. Uh, Quarry Holler is a nice little card, um, but usually a little better in like the black, white, uh, black, green rather, planes, uh, minus one, minus one counter deck. We'll take another Brawler. More creatures would be good if we can round this thing out creatures-wise. Most of the creatures we do have are twos and threes, so it's not, it's probably not going to feel like we don't have enough creatures. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the ruins get banned out of Historic now that it's legal in it. Um, okay, well, I think we take the Scrapper here. Pursue glory there. I like the late entangler. Go 
don't hate a late Ceridon either, but... Yeah, I think we take the Initiate. Making creatures unblockable is pretty sweet, usually. So yeah, I think we probably are going to end up leaving in at least one Ceridon, just so we have kind of a late game card or two. Well... Yeah, the biggest thing to know, Blue Rose, is that this format's really aggressive and fast, so trying to do dirtily things is not usually a good call overall. <laughs> um, okay. So we need to trim some stuff, obviously. We did end up with plenty of creatures in the end. Um, so, yeah, this is a hard one to trim, I think. I guess maybe we want to lose probably all but one Ceridon. Thank you for the sub, Sea Speeds. I think we can probably just lose Tormenting Voice. We're not really... Like our last red-green deck that we drafted that went 3-3, three and three, uh, which was not impressive, but it had um, a bunch of those archers, and so spells were way better. So, yeah. Um... Spells are not as good in this deck. I probably don't want Crash Through a whole lot. Um, Moloch, you know, is a spell payoff, but we could probably lose it, uh, both of them. Um, yeah, so that leaves us two cards to cut. Um, Pursuit Glory is kind of nice just because it's something you can cycle when it's useless, and when it's good, it's real good. Um, so it's something to consider leaving in. It is kind of on the chopping blocks, I think, but... Um, would I rather have it than Blur of Blades, for example? Not sure I would. I can probably just axe the Ceridon and turn into, like, a straight-up aggro deck. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely cut a land here. And I think that's probably what I do. Especially, yeah, if we cut the Ceridon. It's kind of funny because it looks like we have fewer green two drops, but we actually have more green two drops. Um, because we have four stalwarts. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. So I think maybe... We cut a mountain. That gives us eight red sources and eight green sources, which I think is reasonable. We don't have double colored anything. Wish I could add Gigantha to this deck, you know? Let's remember to add our sleeve. I always forget this. Um, yeah, all right, this looks, this looks good-ish. <laughs> I honestly think our last deck looked better. Our, that deck had lots of rares and mythics. We just, you know, never drew them, so. <laughs> Although we did draw our harsh mentor, I guess. Just not our Samut or our uh, Nissa. All right, this looks good. We want to pull off the cartouche trial combo at some point. That's some good stuff. Um, yeah. Uh-oh, it's the Slitherblade deck. Which is such a weird deck. That tells you how weird this format is. That Slitherblade is, like, legit. <laughs> and most formats would not be so good. But in this one... We do luckily have lots and lots and lots of ways of killing Slitherblades. Blades. That's what we have going for us. Alright, so Flare and Tangler here. So if they play a Cartouche here, it's gonna get kinda ugly for a second. Yeah. What a surprise, right? 
<laughs> Gets ugly for a second, but... Oh, hello. Well, in that case, I think we play our Trial of Zeal here. Kill her. And then next turn, we can play our cartouche, get back to trial, and kill something. We could hold off on it for a time when our cartouche is a little more meaningful. And instead place uh, Brawler plus Magma Spray here. Yeah, I think that is what I'm going to do for now. We can hold on to that plan for later. I mean, we do have to worry about the Slither Blade killing us. I have let it live so far. Alright, so yeah, let's... Um... Let's cartouche here. Uh, you can't block. And then we'll play Trial to kill Slitherblade this time, probably. Although if I kill the blocker, I can bash in for six. Too bad I can't play all of these things. Um, all right, I think we just go ahead and kill the Slither Blade in this case. Had enough of it. And attack. And we have brute strength to back things up for later. Okay. I could potentially win the game here. By giving these both trample. And plus three, so that takes us to seven. No, wait a second. Five, so that takes it to nine power with trample if I use brute strength. So yeah, I think we I think we just attack with both and exert both of these. See what goes on when we do. So we're going to go for it. Looks like we got there. Yeah, so far the games all feel like triple on and cap, basically. You almost never block. And people can do massive amounts of damage out of nowhere. I think this is solid. I love it when my opponent plays an X1 and I can really get value out of Blur of Blades. It's a good time. And there are a lot of X1s in this format. <laughs> We've got two in our hand that we really don't want to get Blur of Blades. Let's see if they get us with a sensor here. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
Luckily, I can kill him fight pretty want, quickly. Then a fight you'll get. Um, I can't do it right away, right away because I'll have to get through me of first. that ability. But uh, I'll get there. Cause I can open fire for three, but yeah, that doesn't do the job. Played the initiate? Nah, they would have just made the archer deal no damage again. most busted planeswalker but playing him especially if you don't play him on turn three but our opponent did so <laughs> so that's not that's not a lot of fun for us but i mean if they can't muster any defense for the guy we might be okay now anyway it's my turn it looks like they probably can though yeah. well that's annoying um Well I think we just play another stalwart and pathmate initiate here. And end our turn, sadly. So embalm, like doing getting in on the embalm strategy is one of the few grindy things that can actually work in this format. be able to kill him this turn, I think. Kind of depends on how things pan out, but should be doable. So... You know, it's the Pathmaker Initiate. Yeah, Pathmaker Initiate on Firebrand Archer. And we'll send both of these at Gideon. Exert this. Might be a little bit of overkill, but in the event they had a bounce spell, I wanted to still make sure Gideon... Uh, would die. It looks like he will. Overestimated you. So we do pretty much have to use open fire. Although maybe we don't really. Maybe we can afford to hold on to just let him live one more turn. No, nah, never mind. We can't let that happen. <laughs> what am I saying? You can't let him live. Because this is exerted, and yeah, it would be, it would be hard to make it work. I mean, I suppose an unblockable firebrand archer down. would have done the job, but, but yeah. Well, that's gross. It's actually not like amazing in limited. I haven't really seen people pull it off, but this Avon Wind Guide with it is going to be kind of a nice. <laughs> so yeah. Well, 
I guess we're just gonna go off to the races here. Alternate attacks between Archer, between the Stalwarts, and uh, yeah, play the Brawler. So they'll get two uh, even wind guide tokens if it dies and they embalm it. Which, you know, six mana for two, two, three flyers with vigilance isn't like incredible, especially when we have stalwarts in place. So maybe I should be less concerned. them to start making tokens here. Really don't need it. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. Turn clock, pretty much. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's nice. That makes our lives a lot more manageable. So how much can I hit them for here? If I kill the wind guys, it would be 5, 7, 10, 12, plus blur, bl blur the blades. I think that actually gets us there. Do this math again so you're gonna hit swing for five you can swing for two eight eleven thirteen yeah okay so let's try a little zeal the wind guide here So they could have a bounce spell here, which would make our lives a lot more difficult. And in fact, we'd probably just lose if they have a bounce spell here. <laughs> Maybe not quite, but it would be close. I can just recast my hooded brawler, so I guess that wouldn't suck too much. And I, yeah. Again, then I can exert it again the next turn, actually. <laughs> so. Well, three, five, seven, nine. So they go to one here, probably, right? Go to one. Putting the blur on there makes it so my stalwart is still unblockable. Oh, we still get there. Math. Math did. I was missing a damage somewhere in my calculation. Oh, I don't think I counted my the one that the archer did.
right, this is fine. It's a less aggressive hand. This is a hand where we don't actually play the desert, I don't think. Uh, we hold on to it to cycle it later, because we have plenty of mana without it. So. Stalwart Brawler Brawler is pretty good. Pretty good little start. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet card. It's a good attacker early, and then in the late game, it can make tokens for you. I'm usually a fan of that kind of card. I want them to play an X1. Aha! <laughs> We got our wish. The question, yeah, I think we just go ahead and, well, now I kind of want to be able to double spell next turn, huh? So maybe I do just play my desert here and blur the Avenger. Um, and attack. question is, is it just better to play Hooded Brawler here, though? And then next turn, I can blur. Uh. Yeah, I think we blur the Avenger. I'm seriously considering not exerting this here. Because trading for the steward is fine with me, and if he can attack again next turn, that's fine with me too. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna get in there. No exertion. Yeah. Right. Then we'll play our desert, which I wasn't planning on doing, but because we never do another land, kind of had to do it. That's pretty aggressive to uh, exert this thing there. I will exert. If they want to trade with the lizard, that's fine. They don't. And so then we play stalwart number two and our archer. trade with Thresher Lizard if it attacks me here? I probably would. No blocks. Alright, so Brawler. Can't really attack with our Archer on this board. Oh, Thunder. Yep, Stalwart's great. We have four of them. <laughs> Although Thresher Lizard's one of the few creatures in the format who can actually block it, you know? Man, open fires. Not been my friend. We have a couple of those. They're gonna rumble here, hit me for six. Okay, we got some removal, which is good. I don't know that I wanna hold on to it just yet, or use it just yet, I should say, but. So they could have the mass pump spell. That could explain why they've been so into making tokens. Although, if they double block here, I doubt they have it, so. So, if nothing else, I can actually cast the Survive Half just to get an additional damage out of my Archer. <laughs> that could matter. It really could. 
So, Hooded Brawler is kind of annoying when there's a Steward of Solidarity in play. For us, annoying. Ah. Oh, good. They didn't gain the life, at least. I like that they didn't gain the life. Don't like that that's what just happened, though. Um, there's no reason to use Struggle just yet. We'll wait to see what goes on here. If I had five non-creature spells and I'm in an aggro deck, I would still play Archer. It's still a two mana, two one, and that matters. Um, so yeah, I think... I think we will, yeah, end our turn. Probably you struggle to kill something at some point. May actually end up being the Thresher Lizard. Unless they try to play a cartouche or something like that here. Oh, now it's definitely the Thresher Lizard. Get out of here. Get out of here, Thresher Lizard. Three, four, five, six, seven damage. It's not. I can't. I don't feel like there's much that can save him. Nice. exactly what you hope for in this situation. Um, right. No reason to exert here, so I'm just going to attack. Yeah, that's not good news. They've had all the removal, unfortunately. Do I want to use survive? I mean, it's going to... I don't think there's any reason for us to use it just yet. Because it's going to shuffle good stuff back into their deck, too. Granted, it'll increase... We have fewer lands, more lands in play, so it would increase our spell density a little more than theirs. But not by a lot. So I think I'll hold on to it for now. Yeah, I mean, they drew all their removal, and all we could draw was lands <laughs> after they killed all of our creatures. So. It's rough. I don't think you have to you definitely have to be able to use its ability that's for sure but i think five non-creature spells is enough to make it worth it i mean you generally want more but if you got if that's what you have that's reasonable all right i think this is a keeper who do we play first i mean I think probably the Entangler. Getting Paincaster out there early is nice too. Especially against an opponent who doesn't have Blur of Blades. <laughs> and our opponent does not in their color. They do, have various, they do have various other ways of putting counters on things. Including one card that lets them put a minus one, minus one counter on two different creatures, but... And if they have that, we're going to be really sad. 
but, you know, we'll be okay. <laughs> Maybe I should prefer that all they have is Blur of Blades, now that I think about it. Uh... Well, maybe they do. They could still have it now. Okay, so... We'll Exerter and Tingler here. Play a Stalwart. In their turn. They probably have the Scorpion God, that's my guess. That's not gonna be good if, if I'm right. <laughs> not gonna be good. Okay, they have a bunch of ramp right now over there, huh? Scrapper here. Let's hope I'm wrong about the Scorpion God, because they could play it right now if they have it. doesn't do us any good there. Makes me think they have some X1s, though, if they're worried about the pain caster. Alright, so... I'm leaning towards attacking with both. I mean, if they want to block with the Hope Tender and I get to kill it, it doesn't seem too bad. But I guess I can also double spell. I'm definitely attacking with the Scrapper because I can use Open Fire to really mess up their life. Um, yeah. The question is whether to also attack with the Entangler. I think Blue-Red is reasonably supported. It's just not the dirtily deck it is in most formats, is what I would say. I guess... Hmm. Yeah, let's just exert both of these guys. I think that's the plan here. Not sure if opponent disconnected or what. Maybe they'll just take seven. <laughs> I can open fire for the win if they do, most likely. I should... Ah, okay. Well. Yeah, let's kill the hope tender here. We still get in for four this way. We need to find some more deserts. So, 
We'll drop them to three. And then we play Hope Tender. And Burning Fist Minotaur, I think. Is the Initiate more worthwhile here? Making this unblockable? Yeah, maybe it is. I think it probably is. Man, they have so much mana. <laughs> I'm very scared. They can definitely find a way to stabilize with that much mana. Alright, so... Let's try to get in there with this Hope Tender. Drop them to one. They may be about to kill the Hope Tender. That's fine. We'll play the Minotaur and Stalwart in our next main phase. Yeah. So, final reward would be great in most formats, but having to pay five to kill your opponent's two drop feels so bad. Like, it just feels so bad. I speak, speaking from experience. I guess maybe I don't want to overcommit too much because I have two creatures who can't be blocked, but let's get the Minotaur out there too. We do still have an Archer, even if they have a Board Sweeper. They have a kill spell like another final reward and this is why it feels so bad because you're like cool i can kill everything but it doesn't do me a whole lot of good <laughs> all right let's make this unblockable and then back with him and exert both of these Still dead, luckily. <laughs> but that was that was scary to see. At least you know we had her in our first draft of the day, and we never drew her. And at least she didn't beat us there, you know. Kind of a weird hand in the shortage of creatures, but I think it's okay. I mean, the probability we draw more creatures is significant. Um, we can cycle this away if we're really desperate for a creature, etc. We do have a lot, a lot of creatures, a lot of two drops, so. Play an X1. Yeah, but the question is, would I rather play my own creature here I think I would. I think it's going to be better, too. We're going to use that Blur of Blaze at some point, but yeah. We haven't even gotten to use our Ruins yet, sadly, but yeah, it is pretty sweet. willing to offer a trade here if they want to trade. Okay. And I think I play my stalwart here. My stalwart number two and in my turn. Tangler. Well, 
We're gonna attack him first. Oh, crap. I screwed that up. I'm thankful that they took that. Um... <laughs> Trade with Thresher Lizard if it attacks me. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Their deck, freaking Earthshaker Kenra, is a nightmare. I think we're pretty much dead here. There's no way for me to add enough to the board. This will fly. I mean, I guess I can technically survive one more turn. But just barely. Freaking Earthshaker Kenra, man. Alright, so... What's annoying is... <laughs> they can get these guys back. So that's fun. And by fun, I mean awful. But I think we basically have to do this to, have, to survive, of course. And we may not survive anyway, so. Yep. Yep. Are we gonna three and three again? Is that, is that our our record in Amonkhet? It's just gonna be three and three every time. Technically, if Ramen Up Ruins was reprinted in legal and standard, it would not count as coming off the ban list because it's not currently banned in standard. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> And it wouldn't be the first time that they printed a new set and reprinted some old cards that used to be banned and then didn't ban them the second time around. Usually, though, it's cards from much further back in the game's history that that happens with, like the rack and stuff like that. A.A. Ron. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't see the name because of my camera, but trust me, it's A.A. Ron. Man, we've been getting this ruins lot <laughs> which is good but it'd be nice to have some painless red mana right all it's been for us so far is painful red mana more or less we need to hit that third land and we need to hit it now Okay, well, drawing a two-drop works, too, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, I actually did a video on... My top 10 on cards that should never have been unbanned is all cards like that, that Wizards unbanned and then banned again. <laughs> it's actually not really a top 10 because there's only five cards it's ever happened with, but uh, yeah. All right, so let's attack. See if our Entangler survives. It does. Cycle the Glory at some point is an okay play, um, but as long as I keep drawing things to play, I may as well play them. Like, if I don't have a two drop, that's absolutely what I would do, but so far, we've had plenty of two drops. So I guess they're a cycling deck, which is kind of a thing. It's not nearly as good here. You need like rare payoffs to make it work, um, as opposed to what we saw in Aquaria, but it's, it's pretty legit. And they're like five colors, so that's cool. 
Well, there's that land we wanted. We probably still cycle the pursuit because we don't have anything else to do. Uh, so yeah. So attack with both. So if they have that card that puts a minus one, minus one counter on two things, that's gonna suck. They do not. That's good news. The fact that we only have them at 16 probably doesn't code well in the long run, but we do have some, a pretty nice hand. So we're gonna hold on to Pursuit of Glory, because if they play something we want to Magma Spray, obviously we'd rather do that. But, uh... But cycling pursue seems very likely. They're definitely some kind of control deck, and I'm kind of scared. Caster here. Yeah, late claim is sweet. It's a mind control card, but it has cycling, so if you can't get to that seven mana, or you're up against someone with smaller creatures, which makes it a little worse in this format than most. Um, but if you're in that situation, uh, it can work out to cycle it early. Man, someone's getting strangled for sure. Zeal the Strangler. Wow. Okay. That's annoying. So they've slowed the game down. I'm sure they have some very scary win condition. That's not a really scary win condition. <laughs> but, you know, I guess it's a win condition. We can kill it with struggle. All right, lands. I think I've had enough of you. So, we're going to make Hope Tender unblockable. Then, yeah, we'll struggle. And end our turn. Okay. Not super broken up about that. survive. I mean, at this point, it helps them more than it helps me, so I don't think so. That's one example. You know, most of these split cards, both halves give you some nice value. Survive doesn't really. Um, yeah, they could have some graveyard shenanigans I'm unaware of, but I haven't seen them yet. This is pretty weird for an Amonkhet remastered board, honestly. <laughs> We're on a, we're in the late part of the game. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, 
Oh, you mean the background. I feel you. So we do have two deserts, so we can do four damage with Ramen Up Ruins at some point. Keep that in mind. I'm just gonna go ahead and open fire right here. Well, actually, there's value in waiting. I'm gonna wait. Ooh, now I really wish I'd survived. That's not good. <laughs> no! I think we might still be able to win, but, uh... Yeah. We can't... They're only gonna be able to cast, like, one thing, and there it is. Alright, so... Let's open fire the Strangler. Oh, nice. All right, so then we're gonna survive. So that's over. Um... Right, so... I can definitely kill them with my um, Ramen Up Ruins next turn. And I can probably kill them before then. Um, yeah, they're tapped out, so they're just dead. Because Blur of Blades will finish the job. fourth win. probably get away with this hand. Um, yeah, it's reasonable. I mean, which, would we like some green mana? Sure, but we'll be okay. A third land, a third land of any kind really gets this hand going, so... Nice. Okay, well, I think we play Hope Tender. So let's play Firebrand Archer. I'm gonna go for it with Cartouche of Zeal here. Five. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet little combo. Um, I don't think it's gonna... Oh, actually it does work for them. What am I talking about? I was thinking I could kill that with struggle or something, but I can't. Uh, not yet, anyway. Let's play our stalwart here. And end our turn. So, this is 8 damage right now, the two open fires. So just going for their dome might be worth it at some point. I would really like to draw a land here, please. Can I have a land? Oh 
I did get a land. It's not one I can use right away, but... So I think we just have to end our turn again, which is not what you want to be doing in this deck, but, you know... That's where we're at. I still think we can probably take them out with burn spells plus archer plus removal. All that. It's a pretty cool animation. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that card really gives the middle finger to... Um, A lot of decks in this format. Okay. Um, do I fire off open fire? I mean, it's going to come back as a 4 4 if I do. You know, I'm an idiot and I could have struggled last turn, but, you know, it's whatever. Ooh. So Magma Spray can keep it from coming back. I basically have to give up a creature in the process to make that happen, but... It, no, it's probably not worth it. It's probably just better here to be more conservative. Exert this. Drops them to 12. And that means I can do 8, 9, 10 damage to them directly. So yeah, dropping them to 12 is big. And then just end our turn, leaving up Open Fire, Magma Spray. I guess Open Fire plus Magma Spray would do it. And that might be what I do at some point. Like, I'd have to Magma Spray it first and then kill it with Open Fire. But it's not exactly a good deal. So. X is the number of creatures you control. Okay, well, I'm just going to Magma Spray that. So they can tap down creatures here and stuff, but that doesn't really matter, I don't think. No, don't kill my archer. Okay, well, at least you didn't kill it. I'm gonna need those triggers, I think. Ooh. What happens here if they decide to attack me? And I let them draw that card. I don't have to kill it now. So let's just let's let it resolve and see what our opponent does. All right. I think we just let them draw the card. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, open fire plus... That would have worked too. I think it's better to go for their dome here though because I can do eight. I guess I can only do nine. Maybe that's not enough. Except it is because Ronus' stalwart's online in the near future. I think we just go for it. Ronus' stalwart can end the game the next turn, so... Um, yeah. So do I attack with Hope Tender here? And maybe trick them into taking it? Because <laughs> if they take it, I win. And it being in play doesn't help us very much anyway. So I think I am going to attack here. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Um... I guess I can take away authority. That's kind of worth it. So let's survive here. And end our turn. 
I mean, they have to draw a big enough creature here or gain some life to not die. Granted, they do have the ability to draw a card here and that's kind of a problem. Well, <laughs> that makes our lives a little more difficult, doesn't it? We just have to... Hmm. I guess now we need to hold on to open fire and use it differently, potentially. Yeah. Oh, not anymore. All right, so we're going to blur of blades... Drops them to three exactly. And then open fire. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of direct damage in this deck, so... I mean, I did get a little lucky there, but the chances of drawing something that could kill them were pretty significant. Yeah, they were just cycling as a joke, I think. Right, another kind of annoying two and hand, but we have two two drops and everything else only costs three, so I think we're probably all right. You know, I forgot we had our desert in that last game. I think we won we could have won that game either way, thanks to the desert. So this is gonna be a problem if she's allowed to hit me. Um let's hope she can't. I can kill her next turn. We're at five wins, easy racer. So if they have a kill spell here, it's not good. Yeah, I am definitely down with that trade. Also down with killing that right away. Okay, so do I want to play this land? I probably don't. I think it's better to double spell here than play. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Okay, so... Struggle the camel. And then... Then we'll play this desert. And end our turn. It was probably better, maybe... Yeah, it was probably better to just give this, um... Oh, I mean, I'm cool with blocking. I don't want Gus Walker in my life. Alright, so 
play the Brawler here. Probably gonna cycle that land. I guess I can cycle the land first. Okay, still play the Brawler. Right, so we open fire on the Gust Walker. Probably gonna cycle Pursue Glory at some point soon. No exertions here, cause we do more damage over time if we don't exert. You only exert when it helps you attack, basically. Um, I'll decide by the end of their turn if I feel like cycling that makes sense. Yeah, it's annoying. It seems like cycling, it makes sense. Okay. Well, we attack with both here. Exert both of them. Why aren't you a 3-2? What's that about? Um, and yeah, wonder turn. They're flooding out over there. All right, something we can magma spray, so that's good. Yeah. All right, this will be the last game in this draft one way or another. This is not the best hand, mostly just because we don't have enough creatures, but as we have enough creatures, it's a reasonable chance we draw them, and it's not like we don't have an early game. And it's an early game that can, you know, really derail our opponent. to play the forest and I was like oh I should probably play the ruins in case they play something I can magma spray and then uh yeah so that feels pretty bad now <laughs> um I think we go for it with the pain caster here I mean we screwed up our mana but it's probably better to play the most expensive creature most expensive thing we have and then I have time later to kill stuff if I need to so you know if they play a zombie here and attack us that's not the worst thing ever. But yeah, it was pretty... <laughs> I didn't drag back quickly enough to get my magma spray out there. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty good, because now I can go magma spray, kill you. 
and play Hooded Brawler. I have added in my opening hand, I think, three times. And as my only red source, too. <laughs> and I've yet to use its ability, although... I probably should have in an earlier game, although I won the game anyway, but... Somebody's dying here. I don't know who. Probably... Oh, or maybe not. I mean, I can kill that by exerting, so that's definitely what I do here. Yeah. They can have an attack here if they want it. <laughs> kind of doubt they do, but... They do. Okay, I'm probably gonna hold on to that cartouche for another time. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna attack them. And we'll hold on to everything else. You can sack ruin to itself, yep, but you need double red. Thank you for the congratulations, Bleak, and thanks for watching the content. So we're just gonna take two here. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like they might be able to save it. I wish I had more uh, red mana right about now, huh? All right, so I think we attack for six here. And play Burning Fist Minotaur. We are at ten, which is a little scary in this format, but... So, I think we definitely cartouche here. Well, maybe not. Maybe we just want to kill those who serve, or just attack and use brute strength. Lots of options here. Maybe I just attack and decide what I want to do. I can't do all of these things because we still only have one red mana, but I can do one of them. So the annoying thing about Brute Strength is it doesn't save my Pain Caster if they block those who serve. Alright, so I think we go with Blur of Blades here. Blur of Blades keeps me from getting blown out if they have a removal spell, at least completely blown out. Uh, it can still go pretty badly, but yeah. All right. It does drop them to four, and so Brute Strength plus... Well, Brute Strength or Cartouche can probably get us there. Well, now they're up to five, unfortunately, for us. Oh, God. Yeah, I think we're done. I think... I think that we're done. So this gives it lifelink, in addition to straight up killing one of our creatures right here. The only way it wouldn't be is if I hit a mountain here. <laughs> Man, oh no, the life gain would have kept me from getting there anyway. We're still not dead, because I can at least kill this thing, and I will. But we're close to dead. 
Like, draw a zombie, I'm dead. I really need more red mana. God. I could have Scrappered plus Cartouche. Yeah, it's not good. At least it's not a zombie, I guess. Alright, so we go to one here. I can do one damage to them. I can actually kill the token. Is killing the token more worthwhile here? It probably is, because I'm going to be at such low life. I wouldn't even be able to use my red mana anyway, so that's great. Oh, first strike. Kind of forgot that was a thing. Yeah, we lose. <laughs> Without a miracle. Our mana situation was pretty frustrating that so consistently we... Uh, So consistently, our only red source was that freaking desert. And we had, you know, plenty of red sources, but there you go. 